The cryptocurrency market appears to be picking up steam at last. It appears that the SEC is beginning to feel a lot of the heat from various members of our government. In all of their agency guidance, the SEC has done nothing to provide regulatory clarification for cryptocurrencies. In this video, I'm going to provide some very positive indicators that suggest the SEC may soon be required to offer some regulatory clarity. Additionally, I want to show you a recent video of Gary Gensler talking rather bullish on Ripple. Stay tuned for that because you'll want to watch that at the conclusion of this video. I also want to let you know about a very exciting change that will be made to the XRP ledger. For folks like myself and you, this will now present a tremendous investment opportunity. We must be prepared for it. And we need to understand how to position ourselves strategically. Be sure to watch the entire video to find out how. You won't want to miss it. As always, I want to express my gratitude to everyone who has subscribed to this channel since it really helps me create more films like to this one. Please consider subscribing if you're one of the viewers who watches these videos on a regular basis. It really helps me out in the YouTube algorithm and means a lot to me. Digital assets have been existing since 2009, so why is the SEC only now defining them? Guys, I totally concur with you on this. It's ludicrous that the SEC is only now creating a definition for digital assets in 2022. The SEC is actually suing Ripple for failing to realize that XRP has been a security since 2013. This is perhaps even more ludicrous. Even so, the SEC itself has not yet explained what a digital asset is. The good news in this situation is that nothing in this statement implies that the SEC has authority over these digital assets. Simply said, it defines what a digital asset is. It's also kind of funny because nothing in this statement truly gives the impression that the SEC has any authority over digital assets. The more closely you examine what digital assets are, the more like commodities they appear to be. And after reading this SEC statement, I can't help but believe that the SEC is gradually realizing that digital assets are in reality commodities. You may have also noted that Dr. Martin wrote the caption at the top of this tweet. Dr. Martin is the CTO of Uphold, so he undoubtedly has some insider knowledge of what happens in the cryptocurrency sector. He did, however, tweet the following, hashtag crypto is dead hashtag SEC hashtag regulation. I believe that he is being ironic in this situation. I believe he is effectively saying that the SEC is being pressured to define what digital assets are, which is a significant step forward and indicates that regulatory certainty is getting closer. It will take off as soon as there is regulatory certainty in this sector since large money can now finally enter it. I am aware that this viewpoint is unpopular. However, it really doesn't matter at all if the SEC exercises more oversight over virtual currencies than we would want. The only thing that counts is that all cryptocurrencies are treated equally. It really doesn't matter who regulates the cryptocurrency industry as long as winners and losers aren't being picked through, even if the SEC does get a little more regulation than we might like, guys. As long as XRP is given the same regulatory requirements that they must adhere to as every other cryptocurrency. I continue to believe that XRP will rule our financial system. Additionally, the SEC is wonderful news. He is currently under pressure to offer greater clarification in order for these digital assets to thrive in the US. But now, folks, I want to show you something fairly bizarre that I most definitely did not expect to see. Here, Gary Gensler is really seen attending a class, however he is not the lecturer. He is in fact listening to the lecture, which is being delivered by a Bitcoin maximalist. This Bitcoin maximalist will now criticize XRP and Ripple. Additionally, Gary Gensler will appear to defend XRP and Ripple. Therefore, this is one of the most bizarre encounters I've witnessed recently and one I completely did not anticipate seeing. Please pay special attention to Gary Gensler's tone in this recording. After that, I'll explain what I heard in detail. Guys, Gary Gensler appears to be defending XRP and Ripple. I want to know what you guys think about this video, so please pay close attention and let me know what you think in the comments section. You did indeed say Ripple or Brilliant. 
Actually, Rhonda is aware of this, and I am aware that they might approve the UNL. In waves, at least, from a year or two ago, and they might have modified that, are you saying now? They may have some AI today, but I know that two years ago it was just Ripple. I know, I think they're trying, but in Ripple's case, yeah, they ran their own Ripple notes, bank partners, bank partners, bank partners. Or, you know, the majority of Ripple basically because they also added things like they can sort of freeze funds because Ripple got into trouble with FinCEN and they upgraded their code to be able to be able to like freeze people's funds if they did something wrong. The Hearing Foundation sort of did freeze funds and move them against, which is absolutely not something the Bitcoin creators or even the Etherion Foundation would support. First off, it's obvious from the way the speaker is moving forward that he is a Bitcoin maximalist. Well, it's obvious from the way Gary Gensler phrased his initial question that he did not buy what the man presenting the presentation was stating. In essence, Gary Gensler responded to the person who had said, Ripple operates all the nodes, by saying, actually, that's not how it works. They do, in fact, have a UNL where various validators are chosen. When Gary Gensler asks, are you sure various banks aren't going to be the folks contributing to these nodes, the other guy replies, yeah, either way, Ripple operates those nodes. And gentlemen, this is extremely fascinating because Gary Gensler is actually rather positive here against there, essentially stating that the many banks using the XRP network would aid in decentralizing the system. It's certainly not something you'd anticipate hearing from Gary Gensler, and it kind of stunned me. And it really had me to wondering if Gary Gensler is really such an XRP hater after all. Perhaps he is not such a Ripple hater. Perhaps Gary Gensler completely comprehends how Ripple and XRP will rule our financial system in the future. We are all aware of the videos in which Gary Gensler describes XRP as a bridge currency and a fundamentally necessary currency for the banking industry. It is possible that the fact that Gary Gensler refers to XRP as a security has nothing to do with his desire to get rid of it. Perhaps it's only that he wants to control it. He might wish to introduce this new financial system himself. Gary Gensler may have preferred to work at the CFTC right now, but he was forced to work for the SEC instead, which is why he is advocating for cryptocurrencies to be classified as securities. There is obviously a lot of guesswork there, people. To be perfectly honest though, Gary Gensler has never made a negative statement regarding XRP or Ripple. According to what I've heard him say, even if he believes it to be a security, XRP has the potential to rule our financial system. One more amusing thing from that presentation, the Bitcoin maximalist who gave it, the one who seemed to be inventing thoughts about Ripple and XRP, went on to work at the Lightning Network. Isn't it funny that these Bitcoin maxis? Just something to ponder and undoubtedly a very interesting clip that I'm going to look more into. No, they cannot succeed just on technology. The funniest part is that David Schwartz, who created XRP, was a major contributor to the original Bitcoin code. These Bitcoin maxis ate XRP so much that they can't even respect a Bitcoin OG who left to work on something better. So all they have to do is try to discover Ripple and XRP. Ironically, it only serves to highlight how naive these Bitcoin maxis truly are. And gentlemen, I want to wrap out this video by revealing something incredibly wonderful that will be happening with XRP. The ledger on the XRP ledger, NFTs appear to be about to pass. We now have a 91%. Yes, MO, so long as it remains above 80%, NFTs will be included in the XRP ledger. To September 30th. Guys, this is incredibly terrific news, and considering how young this NFT phenomenon is, there will be some amazing purchasing opportunities for some excellent projects that are creating NFTs on the XRP ledger. The most important piece of advice I can give to anyone purchasing X or NFTs on the XRP ledger is to search for something memorable and long-lasting. Don't just go for the most hyped or cool thing. Instead, look for something that will have long-term staying power and something you'll be able to look back on in 10 to 15 years and think, hey, that is sick. For instance, if you built the first NFT on the XRP ledger, that would be a great NFT to have. I can't believe I have this, but hey, 
it might be really valuable. There is obviously some utility here if you search for things like that and want the NFT. Guys, I think there will be a lot of money to be earned here. Don't just seek for hype. Instead, look for something that people will want in 10 to 15 years. Anyway, gentlemen, I really appreciate you being here. I hope this update was enjoyable. Please remember to like and subscribe. It would be really appreciated.